Allison is an Emmy award-winning uh, uh, journalist, and she has written numerous books. Hi. And uh, Past, Present, and Keeping Memories of a Loved One Alive is a groundbreaking book that she wrote. She's on the board of directors of the National Alliance for Grieving Children and on Tragedy Assistance Program. And she's going to be talking to us a very interesting topic, Allison, which is Listen World, Empowering Lessons in Grief from a Writer Born 100 Years Ago. Fascinating. I'm looking forward to it. And thanks so much for being on. You're looking wonderful. Well, thank you, Gloria. Oddly, I do want to say to everyone who is listening right now to get out your phones. I know that's a strange thing to start with, but there will be an interactive component of my very brief remarks this morning. So please have your phones ready as I get started. So I want to take a moment to talk about why I write about grief and loss, what this bit about a hundred years ago, what we're talking about, and it'll all kind of come into play um, as we get started. So my first experience of loss before I began writing books about grief and loss, before I wrote a single article about grief and loss was personal. So many of us in this um, work do begin because we had a personal exposure to our own loved ones passing away and mine did too. Um, my mother passed away shortly after, and we have a presentation, um, very, very short, because I only have a few minutes with you this morning. Um, my mother, this is my mom and me, it's not my daughter and me, it's my mom and me. And she passed away when I was 25. So right after, basically, I graduated college and before I got married and before I had my two children. And so I really grew up um, as a young woman um, without my mom to ask for advice and to ask for guidance. And while my brother and I were cleaning out my childhood home, there is something that I found in my mother's belongings. Within all of her books, there was a piece of paper. And inside that piece of, well, the book, inside the book was this piece of paper and it was a, that very thin onion skin and it was a poem. And the poem was about grief and loss. And it was a very tough love poem about grief and loss. Basically to summarize, it's really about be thankful that you had someone worth missing. It was what I needed to hear because at 25, I felt so young to be without my mom. And my mom also believed in tough love. So in an odd way for me, this poem was almost like my mother consoling me about her own death. But then I looked at the upper right-hand corner and I saw that the poem that I had never seen before that was tucked in one of my mother's books as I was cleaning out my childhood home was attributed to a woman whose name I did not recognize, a woman whose name is Elsie Robinson. So I asked my brother if he knew if that was a friend of my mother's, if it was a colleague of my mother's, a college roommate of my mother's, and my brother had no idea. So I set aside time at my computer to go research who is Elsie Robinson. Why did my mother save this poem? Was she a friend? Was she just who? I had no idea who she was. And so for the last 11 years, I have been working on now a book about Elsie Robinson. And she was born, it's called Listen World, and it's coming out this September. And it's all about her life Elsie Robinson's life. She was a writer. She was a poet. And just like that poem, Pain That I Found in My Mother's Belongings, all of Elsie's writing is very similar in that tough love vein. And this morning, what I would like to do is share with you 
one of, I think, the best poems that Elsie Robinson has written about grief. And it's called, I Build Happiness. And for those of you who are, I know David spoke a lot about recent loss. For those of us who have been on the journey longer, perhaps this poem, I'm only going to read parts of it, will find a special place in your heart as you're looking for ways to move forward. So I'm going to look down and look up and look down and look up while I'm reading from this poem. You are not happy, you say. You wonder if you will ever be happy again. I do not know. I can only tell you something I have discovered about happiness. Perhaps that will help. And again, Elsie Robinson was born in 1883. So this advice is old and oh so good. I have learned to build my happiness bit by bit. Once I did not need to do this. Once happiness came without effort or plan, as naturally as the sunrise, the song of a bird, the swoop of the glittering tide. And so I began to wish that happiness would come back to me, but I wished as a paralyzed man might wish for movement. The paralyzed man thinks of motion coming back to him in a sudden miracle. I thought of happiness coming back to me that way. I waited for happiness to come sweeping back again, like the glittering tide, like the song of a bird, like sunrise. Then dimly, I began to perceive that I was wrong. Happiness would not, could not ever come back that way for that sort of involuntary happiness was part of something that had gone forever. That did not mean, however, that happiness was over. It simply meant that one had to be grown up about happiness as about everything else. Happiness must be planned for, fought for, achieved. And so I learned to build happiness. I no longer waited for happiness to happen. I made it happen. I took joy wherever I found it, in the little experiences, in the fleeting moments, in the briefest of glimpses. And it wasn't easy at first. It was dreadfully hard. My heart was heavy as lead. My imagination refused to budge. But I persisted. And gradually, something began to stir in me, warm in me. And I saw that my life did indeed hold happiness again. And so I came to build happiness. You can too, if you will. So I love that poem. To me, it talks about looking at your life as it is, pain included, and deciding that there is a pivot that is within our power. And I promised you an interactive component to my remarks today. And as I close, because I know I only have a short period of time, I want to go to the next slide. Because if you like Elsie just as much as I do, and you appreciate her thoughts about loss and so much more, I really want to make sure that you know everything there is to know about Elsie and be a part of my inner circle. So take out your phone. Look at this QR code. It'll take you right to my email newsletter list. The book is not coming out until September. It is only March, of course. So there's a long time between now and then. You may not remember this poem, I Build Happiness, but I want you to know more about what Elsie has to say about grief, 
and loss and resilience all from when she was born 1883 up until when she died uh, in 1956. So come along on that journey with me, please sign up. And I would love to share her with you as I learned about her. I've been so much feeling, so much more feeling grateful for having had my mom for 25 years. And this project that I've been on writing about Elsie Robinson has made me feel incredibly close to my mom, despite her having died so many years ago. So the next slide again reminds you of when the book is coming out. Again, not until September 27th. And I thank you, Heidi and Gloria, for having me share a little bit about Elsie Robinson, what she has meant to me personally, how I discovered her, and um, I thank you for allowing me to share my passion project with you this morning. And I send everyone peace and love. And I hope we can all start to build our happiness bit by bit. Well, thank you so much, Alice. And that was just wonderful and uh, very inspiring. And we hope to see you soon. And thank you very much. Of course.